declassify. That's not meaning you wear a tuxedo, David. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you cleared that up. That will not classify you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at here now. I'm classified. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT. Joining me as always is Donna Grindle of Carden. That's right. I have narrowed down my business. I know. I get mine just keeps expanding. <laughs> <laughs> Yours contracting. <laughs> hey. Well, the name has anyway. You think you do more with less? <laughs> no, you know what we do is we just started buying back our time by not doing other businesses. So it works out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll you, on that. the other hand, you're running, you're, you're trying to act like a, a swan smooth across the water but we all know you're paddling like a madman <laughs> yeah that's exactly right <laughs> <laughs> i have that that serial entrepreneurial disease <laughs> i know you, you, yeah good luck with all of those and at some point david will be famous but we don't know why uh, yeah i'm already famous in my own head <laughs> True that. that's True all that, that matters <laughs> Oh, boy. So, uh, man, great stuff going on this week. Um, mm-hmm. So, as we talked last week, my son, he uh, landed safely in the States. So, he's he's with us for a few weeks from uh, Korea. <laughs> and your triplets turn 18 today? Today, uh, yeah. Uh, they're like, hurry up and get done recording. you got to spend time with us. <laughs> which is which is their way of saying, gimme, 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 what you got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, they don't they don't know it yet, but they'll be pleasantly surprised with their birthday gifts. Yeah, and they all graduate uh, next week, so I'll be facing graduation this time next week and all that. So ugh, lots going on. Party down, Dad. Party lots. down. So let's get about this me. done so you can pate. <laughs> enough about me. Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> so what you got coming up? Well, let's see. Um, I'm doing my North Georgia Medical Management Association Chapter uh, E seminar on June 14th. So we're going to be up there in Dalton, Georgia, which is really cool. And then I'm teaching the Healthcare Cybersecurity Officer Live Webinar Workshop uh, for format approved June 20th, 21st, 27th, 28th. So it's like an hour a day. Uh, And if you use Grindle 20... And register, you get 20% off. Woo-hoo. What? What? Awesome. So, yes. drum roll, please. <laughs> Next HIPAA boot camp will be live in Tucker, Georgia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> July 19th and 20th. So, we have a lot of people who have said, put me on the list. As of today, uh, as if we're recording, the, the cart opened. It is now ready. <laughs> you may buy. <laughs> yep, you better hurry. <laughs> yeah, so we've got some super early bird pricing, and uh, it's uh, twelve ninety seven a student, and then there's early bird pricing that kicks in uh, June fifteenth. So get it done before June fifteenth, save two hundred dollars per person. Mm-hmm. Goes up to fourteen, and then if you're at the last minute, people like some of us have to be for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, then that's any time after July 9th. Those last 10 days is full price, $16.97. So get in, save $400 per person if you do it in the super early bird. I think I'll buy it today. <laughs> right now, stop <laughs> what you're doing, hit pause. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want information, more information about that, it is thehippabootcamp.com, which means it's the only one available, thehippabootcamp.com. <laughs> the- so check it out. It's uh, great. It's a two-day, extremely intensive, comprehensive training course. It is what uh, Donna calls the fire hose of HIPAA turned on you for at least eight hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, when even when we go to break that evening for dinner, it's still HIPAA talk all the way up until yeah. it's time I mean, to go. We do breakfast, lunch, dinner the first day all together and Breakfast and lunch the second day, and then if you're lucky, you can run away by happy hour. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you know, we I think we've noticed that usually by the end of the first day, we have to end up 
finding some bar to take people to. <laughs> yeah, usually requires a little something. I think the first one we did, there was a hand raised at like 11 a.m. on the first day. Yep. <laughs> when do we get drinks? Because I'm needing one now. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so. so, check it out. Uh, yes, it's great fun. You get a lot of uh, information. You can, uh, if you go to the information site, you can even hear audio clips of people who've been to the boot camp and, and what they thought. So, it's two days, intensive training, but you at least will, you know, have a clue what you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, not as not as it just training, but it's very interactive. Uh, we also sit down one on one with everybody. That's why we keep the class size small. You get to meet a lot of the people behind the scenes, like uh, Krista, and Carla, the ones that actually do the work <laughs> 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 to make the boot camp happen. <laughs> and then, uh, and of course, me and Donna will be sitting there, there mouthing off periodically. <laughs> one of us more than others. Yeah. Anyway, so. Check it out. Uh, if you got any questions, hit us up. Contact at helpmewithhippa.com. And then yep. we'll answer your questions. We'll do something. So we'll see you then. All right. That brings us to today's topic, which is what data are you protecting? <laughs> <laughs> what data are you protecting? I mean, we're we're assuming they're protecting something. <laughs> oh, no. Well, is- no, this, this came about... Uh, you know, I keep seeing all of these uh, data breach notifications from, you know, it's mostly people falling for the W-2 scams during tax season or some of the other uh, phishing scams. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they go after the accounting folks and try to get employee information. Mm-hmm. And there's healthcare companies that are, dealing with settlements with their employees because they released ex employee information and all this kind of stuff uh, in a data breach. And it occurred to me that one of the things, I mean, we've talked about it long ago, that it's not just about HIPAA, but that to get that point out there, of if you're doing the work for meeting HIPAA requirements, why are you not just evaluating everything and making sure that you are securing everything? And everything becomes very complicated because you've got all the state breach notifications and all those other things. But what matters most is you're already doing the work. <laughs> so mm-hmm. evaluate all your data instead of just saying, well, we're going to do just the bare minimum of what the law says, you know, because as we say often, Compliance does not make you secure, and security does not make you compliant. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are two different things, and usually people are like, oh, the first time they hear it. Yeah, but, yeah IT's bad about that because they'll be like, oh, we got this stuff super secure. That's great, but it's not compliant. <laughs> exactly. Or we handled all your compliance, but did you worry about these things over here? No, just the compliance areas. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you secured that part, <laughs> but the rest of it. <laughs> so one of the things, and I've, I've talked about this before, that we now have our, what we call our policy and procedure solution, um, because it's not templates, it's not, it, it's, it's its own little animal that <laughs> we have built where you answer questions about running your business instead of filling out templates. And part of that, we have included in it uh, implementation of some of the NIST cybersecurity framework. Okay. And uh, it's interesting to see people, uh, why are we doing this? I don't want to do one thing more than I have to. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) that's compliance. (laughs) (laughs) We want to do security too. We want to work on both of them. And when you read... How many times have we talked about the reports that say that the NIST framework should be included in HIPAA security? I mean, yeah, yeah, all of them. <laughs> every report that's come out evaluating HIPAA security requirements, which, by the way, have not changed since 2005. Mm. That's before smartphones. That That's before the iPhone was ever introduced. So I'm just saying. 
<laughs> things have changed dramatically in that time frame. And there's, you know, these rules were written in the early 2000s, implemented in 2005, and there's been no changes, which is an indication that they did accomplish what they wanted, that it was very broad and reasonable and appropriate standard. However, it also says that it probably needs to narrow some things down because it's probably too broad and it doesn't include everything. Right. Well, that's what the NIST framework does, and that's why everybody's saying it should really be brought in. And uh, they recently released version 1.1, and it's been apparently uh, well-received in the cybersecurity community uh, as a... Uh, framework that's been implemented, and apparently even internationally people are using it. Hmm. Huh, David says. And uh, interestingly <laughs> enough, <laughs> that's what I teach in the cybersecurity officer is how to integrate HIPAA with the NIST framework. What? You should take that class, David. I thought about it, but I am uh, predisposed, unfortunately, during the entire month of June and part of July. <laughs> 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 so, other than that, I would have done it, but I won't yeah, go into all the whys, but let's just say <laughs> I have, I've got a lot to do. <laughs> what had happened was, um, yeah. <laughs> but clearly the efforts you know, with all the reports and, and the success of the framework and they're using it, you know, encouraging the use of it for federal systems and and anywhere else, along with all of the 16 critical infrastructure industry sectors. And so healthcare being one of those, it was originally, you know, laid out to include that stuff. And the updates also bring in supply chain, i.e. business associates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're including it in the framework for things that aren't HIPAA. You now need to worry about your supply chain and it takes it further than business associates go figure yeah <laughs> <laughs> it wants you to worry about things like what happens if your power fails forever you know if your power company uh lets you down and you're out for five days or whatever those scenarios it wants you to look at bigger pictures but when we do our solution we explain that look it's not like we're going to implement the entire framework. You don't do that. You, you never really just say, hey, we're going to implement the framework. You, you utilize the framework to define what you are implementing. And so there's already a cross-reference between the uh, HIPAA guidelines, the HIPAA rules, and the NIST framework. So we stick those two together and we start doing things and... It's like I told one of our clients, we were talking about it, and I was like, think of it this way. If you're building a house and you know that the next time you have money to invest in your home, you're going to put another bedroom and a bathroom off of that corner of the house, will you right now go ahead and run the plumbing over there and build it out so maybe even the door is where you want it before you frame everything else in. Wouldn't it make sense to do that? That's what we're doing with your policies and procedures. Assuming that it makes sense to do that. I'm assuming that it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, so the first thing that we have people do is set their profile, which is, is an interesting approach. But then is classify your data because there's more important data in your systems than just PHI. I know, it's shocking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they don't even understand it. So, I mean, how many different uh, uh, how many different data elements do you stumble on that should be protected that no one's worrying about? A lot. Yeah, a lot. Such as? Such as, well, I mean, you're, you have your tip. I mean, HIPAA covers a lot of them, right? Because it has that catch-all at the end. <laughs> The well, PHI, ele- yeah. Yeah, PHI. The, the 18th element, I call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it pretty much says everything else. <laughs> Any other identifying element. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, anything that 
I think one of the things we see a lot of is where they have the information stored in the actual file name. So mm-hmm. you know, they'll have, you know, whatever, the person's name is part of the file name and, and stuff like that. And they kind of... Yeah, but they'll have, oh, that's just our QuickBooks file. Don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had people that got hit with ransomware and because we had to have things down to do the investigation, it would have been fine for the accounting people to be working, but they didn't have it backed up separately. Right. So, you know, they they had it all just kind of, it was just getting caught in a server backup, not in a specific backup and dealt with independently. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the same thing goes for your contracts with your business partners um, and uh, the legal documentation of how your business is structured. Your financial information, your payroll information, all of those kind of things, what people consider work product and and all of that um, has to be evaluated. So no matter how you look at it, you're doing the same core process for cybersecurity. You Mm -hmm. identify what needs to be protected. You protect that data that you identified needs to be protected. (laughs) You detect when problems occur, crises, or your defenses fail. You respond with a well-thought-out plan when things go wrong. You have to have a clue what you're going to do. And then you do recovery using another well-thought-out plan to get you back to normal. That's a lot of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of well-thought-out planning. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's why we're in business, brother. One, so. one issue we see a lot is people don't always know how people are touching the data. They, yes. you know, we'll... I mean, we'll have a client for months sometimes, and all of a sudden it'll be like, oh, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> we have this person, you know, that once every so often they remote in and they do this thing. And I'm like, what? Who, Wait, who's what? this? <laughs> yeah. They, are they an employee? No, they're not an employee. They just every so often. What? <laughs> Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll have that or it'll be, you know, somebody works from home and nobody told anybody they work from home and yeah, it's just it's stuff like that. And, or they just don't realize where the data is going a lot of times, especially when they outsource other services. You know, they got, mm-hmm. okay, the IT company, which is us, you know, we have remote access. Then their EHR company has remote access. Their copier company has remote access. <laughs> just somebody else that did something at some point in time in the past has remote access. All their previous <laughs> IT companies still have remote access. It's just I like, know, oh my it's gosh. crazy, isn't it? You start adding it up, and everybody's like, wait a minute. <laughs> so that is exactly what we're talking about is looking at your, your data that you have and all the different ways that you should be evaluating, protecting everything, not just PHI. And that would help these companies who are already doing all these things to protect PHI that didn't necessarily include all the financial stuff in their protections. We're going to assume they didn't because that was hit, not PHI, Mm -hmm. right? Right. So we can make that assumption. It may not be true, (laughs) (laughs) but we all know about that. How how do you bridge the gap from those people who – you know, we're talking about highly sensitive business information, and these are the the people that have this are the same people who says, "I ain't got anything nobody won't." <laughs> I got <know. laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah, that's always so hard to get people to understand. So, well, you know, one one of the things that we say is you make a list of all the data that you cremate, <laughs> create, receive, maintain, transmit, cremate, cremate. Yeah, I, it works for me. It's how I remember those. Oh, great. (laughs) It does work. (laughs) (laughs) Something works, we'll go with it. So when you do that, and you just have all the data, everybody writes down all the data that they use all day. You know, you got email. Facebook. uh, (laughs) Oh, shut up. (laughs) Well, you know, some people, uh, they'll be using Facebook data. (laughs) Apparently, uh, apparently uh, it'll put you out of business, though. Uh, Yeah, uh, Analytica Place, whatever. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Cambridge Analytica. But we won't go into that. Those are not our people. (laughs) But but if you make that list and you kind of assess all the different data that people work with, and then you go and you classify that data. That's that's what I call it anyway, is data classification. Mm, Big word. Classify. 
That's not meaning you wear a tuxedo, David. <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up. That will not classify you. <laughs> Look at here now. I'm classified. <laughs> <laughs> but we actually give them a table that says, here you go. You take that list and let's really make sure we're going to address your overall evaluation and that way you know whether there's anything else you should worry about. And instead of going, I don't have anything, well, let's prove that. And that's kind of how we take that approach. Can you prove it? Um, Can you document it? Because that's really all I care about. (laughs) You could be right. I don't know. But can you prove it with documentation that you've actually evaluated it and not guessed? We're going to do a digital pat down. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> we gonna see what you got. <laughs> well, you know they they uh, it, we uh, you know what a swag is, right? Oh uh, yes, I am familiar yeah. with the scientific, <laughs> scientific. guessing, <laughs> the scientific guessing method, <laughs> scientific wild guess. So <laughs> that's what most people have done all along, and all we're saying is instead of that, let's actually narrow it down to something that's not a guess. It's a scientific answer Mm -hmm. so that we can show how we got there. So we get that list of data. Now we say, all right, now take the data, you know, group it, and you say, well, let's look at email. And we're going to evaluate what we think that data means to us. So we start with, is it restricted? That means it's highly valuable, highly sensitive, and it's, you know, not only dictated internally, but that you could have contractual requirements that say, you know, you have non-disclosure agreements, you have, you you know, business associate agreements, those kind of things. So that's like PHI, PII, trade secrets, financial stuff. If this data, if you have, you know, any kind of CIA failure, and what does that stand for, David? Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. That's right. <laughs> you are so good. What a good student. So, <laughs> so the question you ask on each one is, okay, so what would happen if this data was released to the public or outside of the business? What would happen if I couldn't trust this data? And what would happen if I could never access data again? Those are would, three questions. Yeah. I'd have and a that'll tell you. Huh? <laughs> I'd have a long vacation. <laughs> that's right. So if it's restricted, then that significant damage would occur if you, you know, it went public, you couldn't trust it, and it wasn't available. That would be restricted data. Data you want to really make sure you're locking down. Makes sense? Kind mm-hmm. of. Okay. And then you have confidential information. So, you know, if it leaks out, then it would have a negative impact on you and it could, you know, mess with your reputation, but it wouldn't create necessarily legal problems for you. So it could damage your reputation. You might violate some contracts, but not like, you know, that's more civil law. We're talking, you know, criminal law. You wouldn't be violating those. So it's confidential information that would bring you into potential civil issues or reputational issues, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be moderate damage to you. So we got restricted, we got confidential, and then we have internal. And internal says, okay, there would be minimal damage or no real damage. It's just that it's kind of like our stuff and we don't want to share it. You want authorized employees, authorized people. You know, it's, it's my business interest. It could have a negative impact on my business interests. So things, you know, that it's it's that question of, do you share the CEO's illness? Is that internal? Is that confidential? Is it restricted? It's those kind of things where you figure out that it might impact some of your reputation and contractual requirements, but it wouldn't be big news. So that's for internal use only. And then you got public I can, I was not drunk in public. (laughs) They threw me into public. So anything that is public information means you don't care. 
You don't care if it's released to everybody. You don't care if you can't trust it anymore. It's freely available internally and externally. Okay. So there you go. That's it where makes most sense. people start. <laughs> I know, really? So <laughs> Everything's let's public. Say, let's move it up to the ladder. <laughs> yeah. So everything's public. Now, which things would you like to be internal only? What would you like to be confidential? What would you need to be restricted? There you go. Now, once I know this, either everything is public, so I don't have anything anybody wants, <laughs> <laughs> or that I don't mind sharing, which I don't know any business that could get to say everything's public. And then you get to, oh, internal use only, and you work your way up, just like you said there. And now I have classified my data, all of my data, not just PHI. And taking the time to do that exercise could mean the difference between you being in the news about something that doesn't have to do with HIPAA and you not being in the news. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, it, I mean, it's worth it. If you're already doing the work, why right. not? Yeah, it's just a little bit extra work. Mm-hmm. And, and with a huge gain on the backside. So you have your policies and procedures that you're worried about PHI, yes, but include some of the other stuff when you're evaluating it and putting security in place. It's coming Make anyway. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I know, really. It's coming it's, anyway. We know it's coming. How it gets here, we don't know, but it's coming. Yeah. I mean, you're going to you either do it now or later. You might as well go ahead and get ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of the way that we look at it, you know, with the house and the, and the I know I'm going to need that. You know, I know mama's going to move in when she gets old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. You know you're going to need it. And so when you do that, it uh, kind of builds that environment so you're prepared. Mm-hmm. And healthcare, especially as far behind they are now, they don't want to stay behind. <laughs> you know, if they're starting to catch up and they just catch up to now and then more stuff comes in, now they got to catch up to that. You know, they're it, go ahead and just get ahead of the game. Why not? And it, and we're not talking full implementation. We're talking making business decisions. That's it. Yeah. Well, if you one other thing about starting now, like the same problem we have with people that talk about HIPAA, they, we always have people ask, how long is it going to take me to, to get all this HIPAA stuff done? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's like, well, it's not going to be one of those things where you say, I'm going to take this weekend and get HIPAA done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. it's, going to, it's going to take a while. But the thing is, go ahead and get started because, you know, it could be like these people across the pond with the GDPR. They're just like frantic trying to get mm-hmm. all this stuff done. You know, if you start now and have these things in place, you will either already be where you need to be or you'll be very close to it by the time we start having those things happen over here because they're coming. Yeah. I mean, there's too many data breaches and too many lawsuits and too many things rolling around out there for things not to change. And as a responsible business, you really need to be evaluating these things and making security part of your culture, part of what every single, you know, it should be on the agenda of every board meeting. It should be on the agenda of every business meeting is where do we stand? Has anything come up in our audits? That's a simple one. Because Mm -hmm. if you ask that question, has anything come up in the audits? Which audits have been done since our last meeting? Something should have. (laughs) Yeah. You know? Or we haven't done an audit because we were implementing blah. You know, those kind of things work. But you should have some information at the board level of where you stand. Otherwise, you'll end up, where was that? Uh, oh, it was the Memorial Hospital lady at the HIPAA summit mm-hmm. where she was talking about, you know, <laughs> it sounds to me like <laughs> it's been a rude awakening when they got hit with the big fines and then the two-year cap. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've been saying forever that the cap is what matters and that's what you should be looking at is what did they do wrong and what the cap, the money really becomes irrelevant. Right. And every Tuesday morning, a long list of people with C's in their title, <laughs> chief this, chief that, you know, has to have a meeting every Tuesday morning for them to discuss how they're doing on their corrective action plan. 
and that will continue to happen for two years. Mm. I think that they'll be in a little bit of a habit of doing it at that point, and it'll be part of the culture because when you have that level of conversation about it, you know, on a regular basis, they're thinking about it, and it becomes part of what everybody's doing, or at least one would think. (laughs) You would hope so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I know, you know, we think about it every day, and it's part of everything we do, but that doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just got for a joint mother Father's Day gift uh, an Alexa for the in-laws. Oh, you, did know, you? <laughs> you, you know how I feel about Alexa security. So they're, they're really awesome. I wish they were more secure. And if they solve their security issues, you know, I would love to be able to have that. I love the concept, the nerdiness of it. It's awesome. And we put it up over at their house because really if it records things that they don't want it to, it'd be nice for me to be able to listen in. Because <laughs> you don't know. There's things they leave out. They they don't tell you that a doctor called or whatever. But they are absolutely enamored with this thing. They emails every day uh, that the music they're able to play and she just kind of brings them music and starts playing it, whatever they ask for and You know, they're 89 and 90 this summer, and they were talking about that they were dancing, and I I hope (laughs) that they were actually up dancing in in the den. (laughs) Uh, So, but yeah, you know, that's that whole risk analysis and identifying the data. There's, There's plenty of data discussed in our house that we can't have one of those things here. It's just not secure enough. But at their house... It's pretty much public information (laughs) based on the weight that they emailed things for years before we could stop it. So overall, you know, it's a great thing, but it's evaluating. We sat and thought through the security of it before we put it in there. They love it enough and it's helpful enough to them that it is a good, it's a reasonable risk to accept. Very good. But all the data, you know, we did have to evaluate, okay, what kind of things could they be talking about, you know, in front of her? <laughs> we can't talk here. We've got to get, we can't talk. Don't say that in front of Alexa. She's listening. <laughs> yeah. But boy, uh, they love their echo, you know? See, the we have one and we had to change the thing where you can't say, you know, if you say Alexa, it doesn't do anything anymore because every time a commercial would come on, it said Alexa. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Start listening. <laughs> well, you know that you can change the keyword. Yeah, that's what we did. We changed the keyword. Yeah. You, you should change it to like Ziva, the name of your dog. Yeah. Just so like. Well, the funny part is when you, every so often I'll just change it uh, and don't, I won't tell anybody and then watch them holler at it. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is another reason you need controls in place right here. <laughs> <laughs> this stupid thing, no word, they're hollering at it. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so clearly, <laughs> we all have to evaluate how we're going to protect and control things in our environment, even in our home environment now. So it's it's a big deal that we really take notice, even at home. I mean, really, it is to go through all the information you have and what will happen and and understand. What information do you have that you consider public, internal use only, confidential, or restricted? You're asking and, me that? Yeah, <laughs> I am. Personally or at the business? Both. Both? Well, I mean, at the business, I don't want, I don't want any of my uh, client information to get out. So that's probably more confidential than anything. Like, it's not hurtful information. It's just information I want to get out. So, the, But that's more internal use. You, you don't mind internally. Who knows it, right? Right for the, for the most part, yes, I'd say most of it is internal use. Um, and then, uh, I mean, we have some some restricted information as far as like our own QuickBooks files and and stuff like that. Our our passwords, personal passwords to like LastPass and stuff like that. Yeah, but, your um, client information about their security systems. Mm-hmm. You yep. know their network diagrams and all of that that I know you do. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's restricted or confidential. 
but it's it gets into who are you going to allow access to it? How are you going to make sure that you keep the integrity of it and the availability of it so that you can access that if everything falls, if the wheels fall off somewhere else, this doesn't fall off too. You know, mm-hmm. segment everything, make plans, you know, segment your network is like the number one thing everybody should be worried about right now. Yeah. Because it'll help so much. Yeah. So, anyhow, this gives us a short episode. We're due for a short one. <laughs> That's why I picked this topic. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, that is our show for today. Please remember to follow us and share us out on your favorite social media site. Rate us all over the place. (laughs) Wherever you can find a place to rate us, do it. Spread the word, get it out there. Um, We have had people that uh, have contacted us and asked questions and sent emails in and and all that, and we appreciate all that. So we it's it's always nice to uh, to see what people are are asking and, and make sure we're providing that information that you guys want. So uh, remember, check us out on the website, helpmewithhippa.com. Don't forget the boot camp. It's coming up in July, so go check that out at The Hippa Boot Camp. Get registered, signed up today while it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hey, we'll get to meet me and Donna as well. We won't even charge you for that. <laughs> David's easy, but he's not cheap. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, so just remember, for Donna and myself, the HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.